Hey YouTube, it's your boy Magnificent. Now you know I was a little bit critical of the price comparison of Boost Auto's wireless charger, but these side mirrors are the real deal. When you talk about distinction, something no one else got, something that they have cornered the market on, it has to be these side mirrors. So for a long time I sat by the sidelines looking at these lights from Boost Auto Parts, you know, waiting for them to create the automatic fold, just looking at them wondering, is it really worth it? Can I create a hack? And I just decided, you know, let me go ahead and jump on it. So here it is today. We're going to be installing these lights. We make the strings louder. So before I even get to this install, I'm a bottom line kind of guy. So let me get to the bottom line. Listen, you don't know who I am. So what do I know? But I'm going to tell you right now, this mod is the real deal. Why? Well, when you can get a mod that not only checks the box of style, but also function, man, I'm telling you, you have hit a home run because the boss, who at the end of the day is important, when they can check off on the mod you did, man, I'm telling you, you just scored some serious points. So I'm gonna have the boss tell you why this mod is so good. All right, so Mac asked me to give my final two cents on these side view mirrors, and I gave them a double thumbs up. Um, 10 out of 10, absolutely love them. Mac has installed quite a few side view mirrors for us over the years. Um, this is the first time that I remember that they actually had the backup lights. And um, to me, that's the clincher. I have a hard time seeing at night, especially um, on the sides of the vehicles when you're backing up. So I rely a lot on my backup cam. And um, the other night when I was backing up, I hadn't, I didn't even know he had installed the, the side view mirrors yet. And so I was backing up and all of a sudden it, it, it felt like um, someone had turned on a light and I could see on the sides of the vehicles when I was backing up. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. And then I realized <laughs> after the fact that it was actually my side view mirrors. Um, so when I got home, uh, I actually um, did it again. I, I pulled into my driveway and then I reversed and then I pulled in again just to see if it really was um, a huge yeah. difference or if it was a twisted mind effect. Um, once I realized they were the new side view mirrors and I really felt like it made a difference. I have a hard time seeing at night um, driving and I hate driving in the winter with snow everywhere and there's always ice patches everywhere. So these for sure um, helped out to be able to back up and see what I had going on backing up. So my final take, my final conclusion is I would love these side view mirrors on you know all my vehicles, the next vehicles we get. If they're not these, just to have the ones that do have that um, backup light that comes on when you put it in reverse. So double thumbs up for me. I love them and um, definitely recommend them. So let's go ahead and compare apples to apples. And we'll compare this to this. Now they look similar, but that switchback is gonna be the difference maker. I mean, they look about the same. Again, it's all about that switchback and that high output LED It's on both sides. So, so we're removing this mirror, very simple. I'm gonna pop this off, just clips, bam. You're gonna use a screwdriver. Just pop off, there's a little thing that, that's here. Pop it off, take off that, take off that screw. There's a little protectant here as well. It's this piece. Gonna pop off those two screws here and here. Also, you gotta use a screwdriver and you gotta pop off this little piece. Um, I find it's easier if you go like this on the top. I'll show you real quick. Just pop it out. Just like that, this pops out. That's it, see how simple it is? So I'm gonna just take off the phone here. Now you're doing this so that you can access this little area so that you can get the wiring is all you're doing. So I'm just gonna take off these three here. I think these are tens. One, two, and then three. Some people that have gotten mirrors in general, aftermarket tow mirrors complain about the noise. If you do, you can easily get another foam piece and put it in between here, more than the one that's there. Maybe cut it to, to, to spec to whatever the, 
the shape is and you can put that as an additional just to help with the noise. Some folks have talked about uh, problems with aftermarket tow mirrors rattling a little bit more than the, their uh, OEMs. Now, I've never had that issue, so here's what I do. You may think it's overkill, but this is what I do. Just put a little bit of Loctite on there because you know it's rare you ever take this off just to make sure that these, once they're uh, torqued, they don't come back out. I just kind of tighten them until it's tight, but just a little bit of hack that I do to make sure that I don't get any rattling. All right, so now it's time to connect wires and do some rowdy. So this is how I take off this door handle. There's just these little wedges that are keeping this thing in. So you just gotta press them inside here and you're good. So I use this curve plier, you can use a straight one if you want. And just once you press those in, life is good. Another alternative is you just press one side in, push, twist, see it's out. So you just press, I'll show you. So this here, these, you just press one in, it's twisted, got the other one in, it was out. So you have another alternative, get in there and press, either way. So that's that. They say the devil's in the details. I went ahead and used some cloth tape to wrap these areas. Again, the rattling, it's just so small little things. And of course, I do sound deadening, just small little things, but uh, wrapped it when I ran out of my cloth tape, I used just normal electrical tape. And I just wanted to get these areas, you know? This is where these two connect here. This is the fuse. Just don't want that bang, bam, bam, banging going on, right? Hear that, right? Versus, it's just so subtle. But again, that was in the details. I suggest you wrap it with something to make sure it doesn't uh, rub or whatever else. So the goal is simply to route this wire through this electrical uh, boot here underneath. Take it to the other side, splice these wires to the other light that I'm gonna mount, and then take that from the inside of the cab, take it through the firewall, and then go ahead and connect it to the appropriate places inside the fuse box. So just, there's two little clips right there. There's a clip right there. Oh, there it is. You see it right there? That little clip is all you're looking for. This was the old wire for the uh, courtesy light. So I'm just gonna pull that out, pull it out here, and then that should help me do what I wanna do. So let's do this. All right, you can use whatever you want. I'm gonna use a wire grabber. If you don't have a wire grabber, use just something straight get through this pocket, you just wanna get it straight. Now it's already tight, which it probably won't be for you because I've already gotten the speakers going through this. So I'm gonna have to finagle a little bit. Some hacks that I use, I get some white lithium grease, which I'm probably gonna do now, so that it just smoother, right? A little lubrication goes a long way, so let me do that. Let's spray some in here. I feel it's almost through. You typically don't want something like a wire grabber. It's this tight because it's hard to get the uh, the rigidity for you to push through after a while. But all right, so I got it all routed through. Use the methods that I talked about. And I'm gonna put the door panel back together once I secure these so that they don't move, 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 move. All right, so you see I went ahead and routed wires under there, through my uh, sub there, to the other side. And she's right there. I'm gonna connect and splice, then route it through that firewall there into the engine bay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take off 
the driver's side mirror, replace it. Then I'll just go from there, same thing as I did before. This wire grabber comes in really handy. So this is from the passenger side, went ahead and spliced three different wires. I'm gonna splice them, connect them to the, uh, the driver. And it's different. It. I'm gonna go ahead and solder. Don't like the crimping, wanna make sure it is secure. So soldering, here we go. Okay, so next step is to breach the firewall. Now there are a couple of options. I just went through the big boot. I'll see if you can see it there, see that red wire? Um, see that boot right there? I just went through that big boot because I've already used my stereo. Just went ahead and punctured it and how I did it, it was real tough. Had to get some long needles pliers and I just pushed it through this way. So from the engine bay towards the uh, the steering wheel and the driver's side inside the cab. And with the mouth of the needle nose pliers sticking out like this, I went into the cab and I stuck real, real deep in there. Then I grabbed the wires I was looking for. I put them on the, uh, I made sure that the needle nose pliers grabbed the wires. And then I tightened them real good. Bam, and I pulled the panel, removed the, the cover. And the instructions are very simple about what you're looking for. You're looking for pretty much just a daytime running light as well as a backup when you hit it into reverse. So uh, you can choose a couple of options. Each vehicle is different. And if this doesn't work, just guess and check. It's pretty self-explanatory. But, uh, you know, hey, there's right there. If you see 10 trailer backup, that's one. Um, and for your daytime running lights, trailer park 24 there is what you're what I, what I ended up doing. You can also consider trying these, but I just went with trailer park. If that didn't work, um, I would have just went with, uh, you know, one of these DRLs and DRLs and see what happens there. But um, I get a look there. There's 24. I went ahead and already mounted it. And as far as this added fuse, I decided just to get my own. You can get 10 of them for $8 on ebay all right just it's a good thing to have and just a heads up so it goes like so this is a and this is b so the bottom one is a top one is b you put the um the new fuse if it's a different amperage on the top so the original fuse goes on the bottom for a and the new one goes on b and you just stick it in so i went ahead and stuck this in there for 24 and then for 10, which is gonna be my backup, here's how I just grab that, stuck that in, 10, 10 spot, and we're golden, just like that. So it's real simple to do, and I go ahead and wrap it up. Rewire the ground. I went ahead and just used, again, the same, uh, dragged it through the, uh, the firewall, and you could have just used a kick panel, but I said I'm dragging it anyway, so I just drag all of them through, and I have one solid ground that I'm that I'm using, which is this one right here. Uh, that's for my big three upgrade, you know, to make sure that everything has enough power and such for the uh, stereo. So I just went ahead and just tapped it in there. If you see that red, that's where that's going. And uh, so again, the orange wire, um, orange wire is for the daytime ring lights. The white wire is for the backup cam. I'm oh, sorry, backup, reverse, and the gray is for the ground. So pop that in, show you where button everything up. One thing I would uh, suggest is solder these connections. They come with uh, butt connectors to crimp them, but I'm just gonna suggest uh, I solder all my connections. So let's put them together and here are the DRLs. Pretty bright, very, very bright. Let's see, turn signals here. I gotta turn the car on. Let's see what that reverse brightness is like. That's pretty bright. That's significantly brighter than the OEMs that I had. And also, well, the OEM tow mirrors that I had. I bought some OEM tow mirrors and that is significantly bright. That's high output right there. So, um, all right guys, that's all she wrote. Scale of difficulty, I would say probably about a three. Uh, just a little recap, the hardest part, probably routing the wires between the passenger all the way to the driver and then splicing them. But besides that, 
Um, very simple to do, but uh, I'll tell you how it is during the nighttime because I think that's really where you get to see the, the differences as far as it being high output and high quality. But uh, I'll comment and let you know how it looks like and show you some pictures on the community. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Magnificent. Signing out. Oh, 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 o